Hi everyone, it is Thursday, it is 7 o'clock and that can only mean one thing, it's the Mary Moo Show. <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Mary Moo and for the next hour I'm going to be with you. In fact, I'm here every single Thursday from 7 to 8 where we listen to some great music and we have some conversation, we have a chit chat about different things, you know. I do really hope you're feeling good wherever you are and I really mean that more probably even more this week because we're talking about miracles and healing and things like that um but before we get into it let's listen to some music let's kick things off with some great music and this one's really really cool I love this one it's a new one from Glotchi and it's don't worry well I haven't I haven't heard it yet so this is brand spanking new um, I haven't played it before um but it's a great track so We're going to kick off things off with Glotchy, don't worry, and then we'll be right back for the interview. I used to worry so much. I mean, it was crippling at one point, and I used to say to God, hello, (laughs) I'm here, help me. And he said to me, girl, why do you do this to yourself? Why are you always worrying when I literally told you in my word to be anxious for nothing? Well, I said, I don't know. It's easier said than done, I guess. But then he said to me, well, in the fullness of time, you'll see. And I said, okay, I'll see. (laughs) And I've seen, after such an encounter, all my worries, (laughs) they just melted away. They're gone. Everybody, welcome back to the Mary Moo Show. That was Glotchy with Don't Worry. And now we are talking about medicine and miracles and literally kind of discussing whether these two can exist in the same universe together. And I mean that as Christians. Obviously, we know that miracles do happen. We know that obviously medicine and science is there for our benefit. But there are some arguments as to whether the two can mix, you know. There's some people who don't believe in miracles and only believe in science and people who 
only believe in miracles and don't believe in science. So um, I wanted to discuss um, whether those two can exist together and and when we would need both. And this aspect of healing I'm talking about, I'm talking about being healed from something. So there are different kinds of healing when we're talking about that. There's inner healing, there's healing of the mind, which is all kind of in the same thing. But I think the focus of this um, interview and this discussion is really all about um, getting healed um, from a particular kind of illness, um, whatever it is that's physical, that actually demands a physical manifestation in that kind of way. But I do think it can relate to it all. And I am going to have um, other conversations a bit more about healing, kind of breaking it right, right, right down. But today I want to kick things off with, can medicine and miracles kind of exist in the same place? Do we need both? And yes, as I've alluded to, if you've been on my Instagram and follow me, I've been sharing um, about a documentary I was watching about people who think they've been healed and end up in hospital um it's like one extreme or the other so we're gonna get straight into the interview and um yeah let's go right so we are at the point of the show that I know you're looking forward to it and so am I I've been really really looking forward to it as I said we're going to be talking about um medicine and miracles whether the two can work together whether there should be polar opposites or how we actually effectively use both. Because I do believe there's a time and a place for both of them and they both can work together. But what do I know? I have a professional on the show and her name is Ruth. Ruth, say hi. Hi. <laughs> you are a professional. So just so people understand what I mean when I say you're the professional in this. Can you <laughs> a brief, a brief um, background to um, your, your actual um, experience your professional experience so at least when we're talking about medicine stuff like that and you know dispensing things people can be like oh yeah she knows her stuff she knows what she's talking about <laughs> ah well I don't know I don't know how much I know but um <laughs> yeah <laughs> I'm a pharmacist and um, I've been a pharmacist for well well over two decades now I think mm-hmm. and um I've worked in community pharmacy, I've worked in GP practice, and now I work on um, clinical systems. Um, so I'm also an independent prescriber. So um, yeah, that's that's uh, my experience in a nutshell. I'm a pharmacist. <laughs> and I think, I, I think, I think, I think that qualifies you to talk about medicine, medicine stuff. Oh, does it? <laughs> Yeah, I, I think I think it does. <laughs> oh, okay. So we have been talking. Welcome, everyone. If you're just joining or just tuning in, um, we are talking about miracles in medicine, and I've been talking about something that happens. I'm going to let um, Ruth know. Um, we really want to kind of get to some sort of conclusion today on whether we think both medicine and miracles can work together. So. Ruth, as I was telling you, obviously, as we were discussing the show, I mentioned that I went, obviously, I love watching YouTube videos. And there was a documentary that I was watching where there's a lady who should attended a conference. And mm. I don't know what names, I don't know if I should drop names, but oh, this is a very prominent minister, like a right. you know, well-known, well, well-known minister. Mm. Okay. Yeah, so it's not somebody, some somebody's nan around the corner or some sort of dodgy um <laughs> not even somebody who's considered a dodgy um, um witch doctor or something like that this is an actual prominent uh, leader in, in in the christian faith so she went to one of his um conferences where they do healing ministries you know the kind where people get out of wheelchairs and all sorts of stuff like that right Mm. Yes, yeah, so she goes to one of those and you know he apparently does a prayer and she um something along those lines and she believes that she's been healed from I'm not exactly sure what it was but I know she was having medication every day for that so she believes she's healed she goes home and she's dancing around rejoicing she mm. throws away all her medicine her prescribed um pills and things that she needs to take um and literally the next day she ends up in A&E fighting for her life because oh, she didn't take it so um, she obviously, this controversial documentary, I don't know if anyone's ever seen it, but she was actually saying, oh, it's a whole load of, you know, nonsense, really. Like, look at me. I really believed and I, was, I ended up in A&E, like, fight for my life on 
um, support machines and what have you. It can't all be real and stuff like that. So that's what, what, I'm, what I'm talking about. But however, I myself have experienced it and I've actually witnessed people being yeah. totally healed from like dramatic things like which we'll consider today some of like cancer or something like that and not have yeah, to yeah, absolutely. Medicine. yeah. Mm-hmm. so I wanted to give you a take on 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 that um I actually don't think she was actually healed I don't know I, I don't know but what do I know what was what do you think about that <laughs> um I I just think that when it comes to healing and when it comes to you know, medicine or healing. I mean, look, Mark in the Bible, um, the Bible says that, you know, we know that, was it Luke or Mark? Uh, was it Luke that was a, a physician? I believe it was Luke. Yeah. It was Luke, yeah. So, I mean, there is a place for medicine. And um, and if, if using medication is bad altogether, I don't even think that you would find uh, Christians... Um, in 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 the profession if, if that makes sense and also actually using medication itself i mean i'm pretty sure that not all you know healthcare professionals are christians or you know bible believing but actually being able to use medication and get better in the first place i know you might call it science but actually it's also i don't think that god is absent in mm. all of this so that's 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 what I believe. Also, um, getting a yes or no answer on this um, on this subject, I think it's almost like putting God in a box. So if you look in the Bible, where you know there, there've been times where Jesus spoke a word, for example, when he healed um, uh, the the guy's servant that came to him and said, you know, I believe, just speak the word, and Jesus spoke the word, and there was a blind man where Jesus. <laughs> Spat in the mud. I mean, <laughs> with the spat in the mud, and then touched his eyes. Um, also, there was also the account in the book of Numbers where, um, where the Israelites, when there was a plague in their midst, and God asked Moses to make an image of a serpent, and everyone that looked onto that serpent was healed. I'm pretty sure God could have spoken the word. So actually going um do you have to take your medication or not it's almost like putting god in a box god can god can use anything he can speak the word he can you might just wake up the next day and be well you might need medication so i think just going you know um you need medication to get better you don't need medication to get better it's almost like putting god in a box and we can't do that because um as we know, God deals with us as individuals and also by the level of our faith. But we need to be we need to be wise in these things. We need to apply wisdom in everything that we do. I like that you said that because, like you said, ev- everybody, we all are individuals. So every healing can be very, very different, as you've just described and shown yeah. biblically in examples. And there, you're right, because I know there was a uh, case even with my sister. She was she had like an enlarged heart and she um, was doing what they said. And then just one day in, in, in a worship session, she did, she she just felt like she literally fell out and was she felt she was healed, but she had to go and check mm. it out. She actually went to the doctors. They did the, they did the tests, checked, and they said, "Oh, so what do you mean you used? What did you? How did you?" They were so surprised themselves. They're like, "Yeah, yeah the documents show you did have an enlarged heart, and yeah. whatever it's called, and now you don't." Okay, but then they check and they double check, and that she doesn't have that. So um, I've seen people who, like we said, who've used them with them, take done what they've asked, and then mm-hmm. want to check and said, "Do I need to?" wear this heart monitor do I still need to take this thing because I mean, yeah. like, there's no trace of it in your body and yet some you're right where they've taken it and um yeah. God is in science I like that you said that um that God is actually science so why do you have to actually separate Absolutely. the two and it's all about applying wisdom as well I mean you your sister going back to the doctors to get an x-ray done or to get it checked doesn't mean that you know she doubted God for any reason but it's actually it's wisdom it's it's absolute wisdom. So um, yeah, I think uh, yeah, in everything wisdom. the Bible actually says that we should we should apply wisdom. So um, yeah, definitely apply wisdom and and, and trust God. And you know the reason why I I definitely asked you to come on this show. The reason why I asked you on the show, guys, is because um, Ruben actually 
I just called you. I called you the name that we know you. <laughs> oh, she, I she, knew that was going to slip out somewhere. <laughs> oh, um, yeah, yeah. So if you, if you see, if you hear me referring to her as Ruben, it's because that's the name, sort of the, the your friends and family call you, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah no, that's right. Yeah, okay, so... um. What say? Yeah, so the reason why I asked um, you to come on from the show is not just because of your professional background, but um, I had a friend who, you know, was going through a lot of problems, um, mm. and which led to a lot of in, uh, fertility problems, and was basically right. told you're not going to have, um, you're not going to have any children, and obviously that mm. brought a lot of stress and sadness and things like that. And obviously she'd been mm. praying not just day one, not one day, not two days, not even not even one year. Like it's been, mm. it was an extensive period of time. Sought medical advice. Obviously was obviously went to church, had prayers done, and nothing seemed to be working. Um, mm. And to encourage her, I know that you put a YouTube video out about your experience with healing, um, which I sent over to her as a way of encouragement. So did you want mm. to share um, what that was? And I'll conclude my story about my friend, but um, you you put out a, a YouTube video through your church to talk about your your healing journey um, and your fertility journey. I don't know if you want to talk about your talk about that with us and, you know, share. Yeah, no, I don't, yeah, no, I don't mind that at all. So, um, yeah, I'll be, yeah, I'll, I'll keep it short because it's, it's, it's <laughs> be a really lengthy story but I'll keep you really short so from when I was like really young um probably from almost as um maybe almost just after I started you know my periods um I will you know I used to get like really heavy periods and really like a lot of pain and um I remember right from like the age of like I think 14, 15 or thereabouts, I'd started to take uh, contraceptives, not because, not for contraceptive, you know, not to yeah. prevent pregnancy, but to um, sort of um, mm-hmm. help with the mm-hmm. bleeding and also the pain as well. So um, as I grew older, um, this pain, they got, they grew worse and I had to, um, and I was under the care of, uh, of a gynecologist eventually. And um, I remember um, them saying to me that, you know, for my age, um, I, I, had, um, I had some fibroid tissue. So I had fibroids in my womb. And also I had um, lots of cysts in my ovaries. So they call it, they call it polycystic ovaries. Um, and um, shortly after I got married, um, I think we literally got back from honeymoon and um, and I bled for ages I bled for months and and just non-stop it would not stop and you know almost got ill with anemia with it because I was bleeding so heavily so I had to go back to um the gynae and um, they found out that not only did I have fibroids and polycystic of ovaries I also had um there was a, a problem with my endometrial lining um and because uh, I used to get a lot of pain so I think I had um the, the suspect I had an endometriosis as well and oh. then there was a problem with um my tubes uh, so there was a lot of stuff going on gynecologically so uh, the gynecologist was like okay from this you know um I hope um you know you know he said oh congratulations you know uh on your marriage but just to let you know you know your but it doesn't look like you'd be able to conceive and 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 even if you try it's going to be really hard so he said to me when you guys are you know when you're ready to start trying he said come back and uh, we'll, we'll see what we can do um kind of thing so um i remember going to a women's program in church and uh, it was a, it was a it was a it was a weekend a friday saturday sunday i think you were there as well uh we, we were singing the worship team and um on a Saturday, I was meant to go to the gynecologist um, for a pre-op um, for uh, an operation. I think I've skipped a few a few steps, so I think I, I needed to go um, mm. to, to correct some some stuff with my uh, with my tubes and and things like that. So went to the um, actually had a previous visit to the gynecologist. They'd given me some medication to sort of help 
with uh, ovulation. So I've got to say this uh, at this point, I've got, I've got to say, <laughs> Do not try this at home <laughs> okay do not try this at home so when they gave me the medication when they got when they gave me the prescription I had a feeling that I didn't need it not because I become a pharmacist I've got no problems with taking medication I don't I'm not one of the people that things you know if you take medication then you, you're not you know you don't have faith or you don't believe do you know what I mean yeah, yeah, I yeah. didn't really need any anything to sort of um you know help me with my ovulation and and I said this and I said don't try this at home because you know your story might be different and God mm-hmm. deals with every single one, one of us uh, as we know Christianity is a, is about about relationship I've got three children um, I think that's a bit of a spoiler alert there and I deal <laughs> with each um, uh, differently um I wouldn't so this is how God deals with us as well uh b- b- because you know we're his children and he deals with us differently so in my case I felt that I didn't um I didn't need to take it and that was how I felt I felt really strong convictions about it um anyway I went to um so I, I went back to the gynae and I, I needed to go for this op so I had the pre-op I went for the pre-op um during a quick break from this um women's conference and um I remember yeah so we we I went back to church sorry and <laughs> yeah, no and uh and I remember uh, a few weeks later um I mean I I'm I was supposed to be this woman that was meant to have like fertility issues and probably not even have kids at all and uh, I had a missed period which was nothing unusual for me because I would either really bleed heavily or not have a period so I didn't think I could be pregnant but anyway eventually I found out I was pregnant and I rang them and I remember ringing them going oh I need to cancel my appointment now I don't need to come and they were like oh what do you mean you're gonna have to go back to the you know to the the yeah uh, to the queue again it might take months and months you know you know how long it took us you know to get here and this I said no you don't understand I am pregnant they were like what so they were absolutely surprised that I could even conceive without you know any help at all and um yeah and not only did I have a child I had two and and three so um yeah so that's my story when it comes to and I remember God saying to me that you know you know he would he would give me children he would give me fruit of the womb and I wouldn't really need to you know to 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 struggle to have children and that was my that's my experience with God and that's why I said you know uh, don't try this at home <laughs> don't try your ovulation medication or you know that, that you know god might want to deal with you in a different way so that's my my testimony i love it i love hearing that because obviously now i know <laughs> each of those children and the journey and the story yeah. and it's just so funny that they're like if you don't oh if you don't Come and take your thing. You're gonna screw it all up. And you're gonna know. get it really done. And um, it is. It was. I love it so much that when I had that friend who was going through it, and her situation was exactly the same as yours. It's, it, it, it seemed very. Um, maybe I should have her one actually one time. But she, it seemed very impossible for her because she'd had operations yeah. to remove the fibroids. There was issues still there. It was. It was literally such a problem. And I said yeah. to her, your YouTube where you shared your testimony, to say to her, oh. look trust me I know it seems like you've never met anybody with all those conditions all in one from yeah, yeah. all of those things um yeah, all all of them, yeah. those conditions individually on their own would cause fertility problems let alone all, all, of, them. Yeah. all of them yeah yeah and I yeah. told her and like I said she still went and had her fibroids taken out she had the operation she had the, 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 the all the checks for the, the confirm she had all these things and was just suffering and I remember mm. that um I sent her that and one day I had had a dream and God speaks to me a lot through dreams and I had a dream Mm. that she was going to have a child and it was so soon that I was actually embarrassed to tell her and I told God I said God I can't go and tell her this because this was it was literally going to happen like in like two months or something like that and um Mm. I said God if this happens then I'll tell her because I know you have to be obedient when God speaks to you because you talked about relationship that's having a personal relationship with God so I know my relationship with God I'm like God I have to be obedient when you show me these dreams and visions because they're not just that's why you 
in the first place. So I took a step of it. I called her. I said, you know what? Um, I just have to let you know that you are, you are going to have a child. And it's so soon. I'm actually so concerned, worried to tell you how soon it is. And um, But it's very yeah. soon. It's like this year. And, you know, and she just kind of looked at me like, mm, okay, then whatever. But <laughs> I'm so glory with all of this stuff. Same, similar sort of thing. She she was told to forget it. Practically, she was distressed. Mm. And one day, she just felt she felt so funny. So she thinks she thought that she, her period was coming on. She felt like something was happening to her. Only yeah. to go find out that she was pregnant. And to go oh, wow. and, yeah, she's actually gave birth to the baby boy in um, what's it called uh, last year. Oh and, wow! That's yeah, amazing. yeah, yeah. It's an oh, amazing testimony. So cool. it really is. Really is, and I, and I really wanted you to know that. Obviously, I'm. I know, I'm. Sh- oh. It's just about fertility, this whole um, thing. But it's just about people who I know with their real issues and how your story oh, really yeah. helps encourage somebody else. And that's one thing I love about testimonies. And with both cases, both of you sought medical advice. Both yeah. of you had medical plans. She had yeah. operations, things like that. But in the middle of it all, God still did a miraculous miracle combination yeah. of both or, or isolated with it both again don't try as we say don't try this at home but what we what you should try is about your personal relationship with God and having wisdom um and saying God what's for me I guess what what route do I take with my with, with me wanting a miracle what route do I take do I do I go medical and and then it works for me or whatever I do because even a successful operation is a miracle in itself Exactly. Yeah. So. I mean, it's like I said earlier on, it's like putting God in a box. God can use anything. And um and there the, the, the were doctors in the Bible. And um if if God wouldn't if God, if God doesn't want to heal with medication, I mean I don't think that um I don't think you'd have Christian doctors. Do you know what I mean? And also even the advancements in medicine at at all. I mean, in the first place, I think it's a, it's testament to, um, to, to God. I know people, people who don't believe in God might think, Oh, come on, it's science, but um, the glory of God fills the earth. And um, yeah, I would attribute that to to God as well. Fantastic. Um, That's a good segue. We're going to have a quick break um, and then we're going to come back and talk about talk, talk a bit more about this. Um, so we're going to have a quick break and we're going to listen to um, her name is called Siwa and the song is she's featuring AP and it's called I Love You Too. And it's a wonderful song. So we're going to take, take a quick break and we'll listen to that and we'll be right back. What is love? Ooh, let me know.
ultra love. Bread in your arms, you got me all the time. Bread in your arms, you got me all the time. Everybody, welcome back to the interview. My name is Mary Moo, and on this show today, I am with a professional. Her name is called Ruth, and we've been talking about miracles and medicine, and um, just obviously seeing where both of them fit, especially as a Christian, especially just in our way of life, um, wanting miracles, praying for miracles, but also um, the, the the science part of the all as well. And we've just been listening to um, Siwa featuring AP with "I Love You Too." It's a great track. Go and check it out. It's just dropped. I think it's only like five days old. So it's a brand new spanking new track and I love it. So take some time to look at, listen to that. But let's get straight back into it. Okay, so um, as I said, we're talking about med- medicine and miracles. And I thought I'll talk about this because it's funny how we're talking all about fertility and things like that. So I'm hoping we're actually touching um, people's lives through this. Um, but this can relate to any other aspect of what you're either looking up to God for in terms of healing or whatever you need. Um, but I was watching um, the series on YouTube by Adrian, Adrian Houghton, who's married to Israel Houghton. And she was talking about her fertility journey um, and how she mm-hmm. just assumed that everything was going to be completely fine for her. But hers was, was incredibly more challenging because not even IVF worked. It failed all the time. Mm-hmm. And nothing, nothing worked. And she had to um, use science to have her the uh, most beautiful boy that she has. Um, she had to have a surrogate. And a lot of people in the comments um, were commenting, oh, that's not a miracle. And, and, you know, how is that a miracle? And, oh, it's, it's really, really awful. Um, that's not biblical in any way. And I don't know if you remember, Ruth, I actually messaged you and said, explain to me about mm. this whole surrogate thing. It's, it's, it, I mean, do they carry, do they really, really carry the... Um, the parents dna or is it the, is the, the person who carries the child for them does they have is, is it them in any way or what's happening and i was just trying to understand it all because you know to be fair I, I didn't know anything about that whole surrogacy journey and stuff yeah. but you know, i still pitied her because i felt like actually this is a miracle for them um the, the ability to be able to even have that as an option in my opinion is I, still a great miracle but some people were like great. i don't believe it what are your thoughts <laughs> what do you think um it's that's an interesting one isn't it because there's always been questions about um that I know there's lots of debates um about surrogacy and whether you know it's um it's it's Christian or not and like you said it's using science um first just to explain to you there are different types there are types where the um the 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 egg would come from the mother and then you get a sperm cell from the father and then you get this you know artificial insemination and it's you know it's and then the, there's the surrogate mother then actually carries this child that is not um, biologically theirs at all well not 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 this at all in terms of dna so and then there are times where you know it might be the the surrogate's egg and um and and the father's sperm cell so it could be that there are different types so um because there there are times where you know the the receiving mother i say receiving mother the mother is not um probably can't produce eggs or anything like that or viable eggs and then so they use a surrogate eggs okay and there might be occasions where It's because, you know, for whatever condition the mother might have or the woman might have, and they might not be able to carry a baby to term. So for that reason, they would use their egg and then the egg of their husband. Or, you know, there are so many scenarios where, you know, uh, why someone might use a surrogate. Um, And um, I find it quite interesting when people come and, um, and, and give their opinions about people's journey. Do you know what I mean? And judge people in terms of, oh, you know, that's not Christian. That's not. Let, let me give you another. I think I'll go back to what I said earlier on about, you know, with, with the Moses situation where um, a um, uh, the, 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 the plague broke out in the camp of the Israelites because of their sins. And then God asked him to um, make an image of of a snake, of a serpent. 
I mean, in those days, you might think, well, but, but you know, that's almost like making an idol. But that was what God wanted. That yeah. was the way God wanted it. And God said, you know, exactly. look onto this and you'll be healed. If you look onto it, you'll be healed. So God uses like so many like really weird stuff, so many different things. So, again, that's like point god in a box when yeah. you know all these opinionated christians are you can't do that you don't know people's relationship with god you don't know how they sought god you don't know so my to answer your question what's my opinion of that i th- there's nothing sinful about that your journey with christ and that's my opinion my journey with christ is completely different from yours okay. my relationship with christ completely different yeah. from yours yeah. Does that make sense? There, there yeah. might be some people with God tells them, actually, you know, like God said to um, Jesus said to the man to go and bathe also in the river, you know, go, yeah. before, to get well. The the um, the the guy with the um, the guy, <laughs> the man yeah. with the uh, what did he have? Leprosy. Leprosy, yeah. So, yeah. And then some people he spoke the words, like I said before. So we've got different relationships with God. And in my opinion, what she chooses to do or what she chose to do is her business what she has like the bible talks about children are uh, every child is a blessing from god yeah regardless of how they are conceived exactly and i think even with Ad- adrian's um, um case that it was definitely her egg and obviously the um the sperm of her husband um who mm. were together and literally it, you know that the surrogate mother just carried the child for her um mm. And I and so that was and whatever you're you're right whatever situation whatever scenario um, you know everything still is a miracle in itself that we can actually mm. do that because imagine all the women years and years ago like years and years and years and years ago who wanted children who didn't even have the option science hadn't even developed to that place where they can do exactly. a situation like that and that is still God gives the wisdom nothing is 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 no God's not against science in that kind of a way. Yeah at all so let's all chill out and but another thing I wanted another extreme is I was me and my YouTube I want to say it's quickly actually yeah, Mary yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, it's short <laughs> where does it say in the bible that you can't use a surrogate the, the bible doesn't actually address that at all I think the closest that you come to surrogacy in the bible is in the case of um Sarah and oh, Hagar the, yeah, yeah. The, the servant that's the closest that you come to surrogacy, you know, where, you know, go, you know, have a child for my husband. That didn't really end well, did it? But, you know, <laughs> nothing in the Bible says, you know, thou shall not use another woman's womb, otherwise thou shalt die or thou is sinful. It doesn't say that in the Bible. We should stop making things up. Yeah, I think that's right. I think stop um make whatever because we think and if and my, my dad always said to me something like because when somebody can say something oh what you're doing is is wrong in terms of what you can be praying for or how you can be praying for something my dad always mm-hmm. said tell them to go and do what they know so what's if, if it doesn't if it, you know if, that if you're saying you don't believe in that then you pray yourself for what you say exactly. you do believe and if that happens it doesn't doesn't and I think in that situation it didn't happen for that person in that kind of way so it was really like a whole load of just condemning for no reason but mm. I think at the end of the day people really need to have look at their relationship with God and look at what God's actually saying and if you struggle with understanding how God can um heal in that kind of a way read the scriptures and see that like you pointed out God can speak mm. in many different ways and heal in many different ways and until this day even when we look at them and sure in medicine um or uh, uh, ambulance or hospitals that snake on the stick is is really there because I remember seeing yeah. it and, um, yeah yeah it's, so it could come from there. I'm not sure where it actually physically came from, but there is definitely with med- with medicine, you see that snake on the on the yeah. stick. Or you see it there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So exactly. The God knows why he has to, you know, he how he reaches out to us. But there's one extreme, um, Ruth, mm. and that is that there's people who actually don't even believe healing even exists, or miracles even actually happen. And there's me again with my with my YouTube videos and stuff. That was watching that. <laughs> Where do you find these things? I love you too. <laughs> I want to just start giving you others. So basically, I was watching this one, and this guy was going for all these churches and saying, "Oh my gosh, they're all like, they're all bad and stuff." And I thought, "Oh, what, what is the badness in it?" Like, so because sometimes I like to try and see, you know, challenge what, what, what are they saying? And his thing was that it was most yeah. about miracles that he just doesn't believe. And this guy, and I'm not even joking, he was um, in a wheelchair himself. 
Um, but he was against, it doesn't believe that, you know, healing happens and, you know, oh, and he was really saying like, oh my word, like, you know, there they are, they're this, they're, they're mm-hmm. wrong because they think that they say apparently people, these things happen in their church and, and he came to be from one denomination and he, he they just don't, and they're like gasping when they're talking about, yeah, and they said this person got up and walked and, and they said this and like, this is wrong. And they were really condemning it. Mm-hmm. And I Hang on, hang about a minute. How can you, the very fact that you claim to be a Christian, it requires some level of faith in itself and requires um, almost like a miracle to, to be saved. Yeah. And to understand that. So how can you, I mean, are you, are we not reading the same scriptures where we're told to go out and heal and God healed? Like what, how do you think that this ended with the, with the end revelation, the end of revelation? How can you, yeah. I mean, they do, they don't believe it actually even exists. Wow. Yeah. And so for me, I was thinking, yes, we're saying to people, be wise when you, you know, go for healing and go yeah. out for it, for it. But there is an extreme people who don't believe. And there are yeah. shared examples that show that actually healing does happen. Healing yeah, does happen. absolutely. Yeah. And we've got testimonies galore. I've got healing, everything from cancer to infertility to um that so I guess I want to encourage people like God can heal and he's still healing and he, he's still t- touching people's lives um yeah. and so keep believing God for a miracle um keep holding on and I thought to ask you um, Ruth that there are people who are what we would probably say believe in God for a miracle so they have prayed not just once not just twice and sometimes can still be praying and we sometimes we use terms like working through the miracle working through it still believing holding on to god um, yeah. how would you um sort of there's something you said i'll good i'll bring back to you in a minute but what would you say to those people who are out there um holding on to god for a miracle in their lives um or, be- or believe in god as we would say for a healing of whatever sort what would you um encourage them with I think I think it's what you said earlier on, um, and it's about about faith. And all I can say is, um, the Bible says that Jesus, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The Bible talks about, you know, we know the power of God never diminishes. We know that, you know, His power that that healed the sick. So if you can believe Bible stories, and we can believe that the power of God never diminishes, and you know, if Jesus is the same, I mean, Jesus was the same, is the same as He was yesterday today uh, and the saints day and he will be the same forever and if he's done all these miracles um before then he can definitely 100 percent do it again he can absolutely absolutely do it again and i know that there might be people out there that are probably looking for seemingly bigger miracles i say seemingly because somebody might go well well yours is just you know fertility you know these things happen Uh, mine is just great mine is crazy but there is nothing that is too big for God to do and nothing too small I always say that even waking up in the morning in itself Mm -hmm. is a miracle we've had stories of people that were like proper you know healthy and young and then they go to bed and then you hear about you know things happening in their sleep so I believe that even drawing in a breath is a miracle in itself so I would encourage anyone listening to this that I know and I know that I know that I know but because I know that I believe that the God of the Bible is is the one and only true God and he's done it before so he is definitely able to do it again so I would encourage anyone out there just looking for a miracle to not give up and God God definitely is in the business of doing miracles. Sometimes it might not be the way that we think is going to happen, but I know that God answers prayers. Sometimes it might not be the same manifestations that we expect, but I know that he listens to the desires of our heart and he heals us. He is in the business of healing. Oh, I love that. Yeah, I love that, love that, love that. He definitely is. And I wanted to end kind of with this, actually, just as a kind of almost like a warning or kind of making people aware to this. As you wait on God for a miracle, and I'm I'm sure you've probably heard of these kind of stories where people go to different places 
to try mm. and get this miracle out of desperation. They're that mm. desperate. Like I want a child or that that is what I need out of this. I want this. I, I need this so bad. I want to be healed so bad. And I wanted to go to different um news other than God to get healing there's somebody down the road that who's who's on round the corner you know mixes a couple of things together it puts a string around a picture does this <laughs> chants this and God, honestly because it's true there's people who go to different kind of healers uh, out there who are saying that yeah they've they've got the power and that's healed and I know that we talked about God using us through dreams or to pray for people and they experience healing and that does happen but it's the mm. source the source um of where they're going out of desperation, I I don't know if you can back me up with this or have a place to say that in your desperation of trying to get a miracle and stuff like that, it's probably safe that you you deal with the medicine part as opposed mm. to going to, you know, um, through roots that um, are questionable and are, are demonic in nature. Yeah, uh, people promising, you know, like if you go on, in, if I was on Instagram and one popular Nigerian. Um, personality person was selling these um things these this I don't know whatever it was oils or whatever it was that they can use and suddenly you can be you can you can be healed and you can be healed of all these different things and there were I was reading, reading the comment thinking what what really is this happening in on Instagram and people are there going oh I've DM'd you I've paid and all this sort of stuff I've DM'd wow. you, um, um, this is what it is. So I'm thinking people are, are, are you that desperate that they're going to yeah. any means to gather this kind of um, healing and stuff? And I always remember my mum telling me and my, my parents saying, when you go to all those avenues, it always comes with some sort of condition that is just never righteous, never right, that leads to even more problems. And why don't you want to just go to, to God, sort the source? Yeah. Going through different yeah. Things. I don't know what yeah. your thoughts are on this. Oh, no. I, do you know what? When, when people are at that point of desperation, it is actually crazy to fathom what goes on in people's minds. So I will not, I wouldn't judge anyone who... Mm-hmm is that desperate I'm that that's not uh, that's what not that's not for me to do however what people need to remember is that um the enemy does not bless um oh, yeah. it's God that gives blessings and adds no sorrow to it absolutely no sorrows but the enemy is not in the business of blessing us he absolutely hates us and he will do whatever he wants to do to um to build a gulf between us and and God and actually prevent us from receiving our um our gifts in the first place so um if it's not from God I'd rather not have it I know it's it's easier said than done um but I know my faith is such that um I don't think that there is anything, uh, any promise of any man anywhere that would drive me to do that. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, and if you remember, and I know these things happen, you know, even in the Bible, there are magicians. And also remember um, when um, when Moses, when God, when Moses was going to lead the Israelites out of Egypt and he was using, you know, his rod, the magicians were doing the same thing as well to dazzle the people. Look. Our odds can also, you know, can also turn to snakes and this can happen and that can happen. So there's no doubt that there are, there's like black magic out there. Absolutely no doubt. However, it is Jesus that gives blessings and adds no sorrows. And if it's not from God, it is not of God and it is not a blessing. I love that. I love that you said that. If it's not from God, it's definitely not a blessing. And from any other source, no matter how lovely they look, no matter how much you pay, just kind of weigh up and um what see what the conditions are um and see how um the pure it is and um just mm. cry god and wait on him and <laughs> as we say it's better for you to even trust in the medicine um mm. than to be going to sources that um you 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 can't even ask them where they got the ability to do what they did from i just thought mm. i could throw that in because i know we're talking about healing and there's just it's such a vast topic but um, the yeah. major thing is what you said is that God is in the business of healing and blessing people and he has no sorrow to it. Um, and the devil and that side, that the opposite side of things, that they're not about uh, blessings. It might seem temporary. It, it might seem like it's brought an answer, but it has 
serious, serious, serious um, issues at the end. So for anybody who is that desperate, just you don't need anything big. You just need to just uh, at least believe that God can do it and just um, as you just ask. And with the sincerity of your heart, like you said, Ruth, he's, he hears all our prayers. He hears Absolutely. all, he sees everything. He wouldn't be God if he didn't. And I'm sure we've got really great examples of how he really does heal. So that's that. So thank you so much. I've got some five questions for you before you go. Some quick, quick ah. questions. As we do very oh. Good questions. Just think about it. The first thing that comes to your mind. So beach holiday or city break? Oh, oh beach holiday. Beach Beach, beach, beach. Okay. Would you rather have dinner in the house? So that's your hubby making it for you or you making it or a lovely dinner outside in a restaurant, a nice little bougie restaurant. What would you prefer? In or out? Oh, that's a hard one. If, uh, dinner at home. I'm lazy, tired. I'm too old. <laughs> favourite colour? So say that again? Favourite colour, your favourite colour. Oh, my favourite colour. Oh, I love orange these days. I'm loving orange on me these days. Ooh, orange. Yeah. <laughs> favourite animal? Oh, we've got rabbits. I do like dogs, though. Rabbits are cute. Oh, oh, I'll just say rabbits, because I've got Lily and Lily now. Rabbits. <laughs> OK, um, we'll wrap up there, and um, we'll uh, close it off. But thank you so much for your time. <laughs> <laughs> I hope it's been a good time for you. Thank you so much for your expertise. Um, and um, yeah, we'll bring this interview to a close. Oh, thanks for having me, Mary. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> welcome. All the best. Take care. Bye. If you've just been tuning in, you have missed something. You have missed. Um, we've been talking about medicine and miracles and seeing whether those two can exist in the same place together. And I had um, my friend who's a professional, who's a pharmacist, actually, she dispenses medicine. And she's also a pastor. And she's also somebody who believes, obviously, in the power of healing because she's experienced it herself. And so we had a good conversation where she was able to talk about her you know, journey in healing and how she was told, you know, she won't be able to have children. And now she's got three and that whole thing. And I really wanted to kind of uh, see what her thoughts and take her on, on this because she's a professional. She dispenses medicine. So she believes in it. She uses it. And I know that she does. Um, and how do you um, bring it in miracles? Or allow miracles to take place. We also talked about extremes as well, because there's some people who just think it's awful for somebody to depend on um, science and think, how dare you? You've got no faith. You don't know what's the point. Um, but I like how we kind of concluded things. We concluded with this, that everyone has an individual relationship with God and God really treats us all very, very differently. And he might heal somebody one way in this particular way, um, but somebody else a different way. So that doesn't minimize anything or, or um, you know, make something less or worse than anything else. We all are encouraged in, in scriptures and in life to have a personal relationship with God, because that allows us to know how God's going to deal with us, but to also remain open-minded and not put God in a box of how he wants to heal. Um, Ruth really talked about how the Israelites, how they were all ill because the plague had broken out and God instructed Moses to, you know, craft an image out of a snake, um, not out of a snake, craft an image <laughs> in the form of a, sh a snake um, and told them to look upon it. And if they did, they will be healed. And we talked about, oh yes, we when you look at medicine today, that whole snake and, and the stick thing is still in our society today when it, when you look at medicine or images for it. And yet, but God can still tell somebody, like Jesus can in the New Testament, can tell somebody, go and wash in a pool or we can spit on somebody's eyes or we can just command and things can happen. And if you look at all the miracles that the uh, the disciples performed, you have Peter with his shadow healing people, shadow, his shadow healing people or a cloth and things like that. So God can't be put in a box when it comes to healing. His idea is let's get you healed. And all these dynamic ways are very, very um, wonderful. And in some cases, till you get your healing and whilst we've prayed about something, you can continue using your medical, um, you know, resources, whatever you've been given. And some people actually need to go through those routes to get what they wanted, to get what they need, to get the miracle at the end, because God is still in science and God actually is science. We've talked about that. Um, and we talked about not obviously 
you know, speaking bad about people who decide to um, turn to medicine to achieve healing or get better and not look down on them as less of you know less oh you have a little faith and things like that because that's number one that's really rude <laughs> but also that doesn't um um stop god from working and that if that's how he chooses to work that's how he chooses to work um and in all things we need to step back and say god actually we thank you that you've made this happen to us and see what god wants us to do really have the open engaging relationship with him and we also um had a bit of a session where we talked about different sources people can go to different places they're so desperate so 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 desperate um to be healed and to get an answer to something and we're not judging people because it could be really awful to be going through something and feel i i have no choice but i have to start seeking alternative means and what we encourage people to say is as much as it's terrible what you're going through and what you might experience it's probably safer for you to 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 rely on science um, in terms of medication and things like and therapy that's out there rather than going down a route that is questionable that has sources and things that are demonic or not correct in any way it's better for you just to try waiting on god try hearing out seeing what he has to say um but uh, you know not going down a place which can cause you more problems in the long run and I'll end with this. We're going to end with a great song. But I like what Ruth said when she ended her interview. She did say, God is in the business of blessing and healing and he still does it today. And she's an example of many. Um, and sometimes these other places where you go to, they require so much. And the devil and all that side of things, they're not in the business of blessing. It may look good. It may work for a moment. But it's they're not in the business of doing that. So trust in God and continue to hold, God for, hold on to God for your healing. And you can testify one day of what God's done for you. So I wish everybody well. I really do hope you're doing well wherever you are, mentally, physically, in every way. And the same God that's been healing and healing people in the right way, I am sure that he can do the exact same thing for you. Until then, apply wisdom and it's all going to work out well, we believe. So let's end with this song. Um, it's called Something Better by Blanca. It's a great tune. Um, until next time. Toodles. Couple years I've been on my own. Now I know that I'm not alone. You're giving me a reason to carry on, to carry on. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, everything is different nowadays. I lost a few ones along the way. I had to learn to trust it'll be okay. It'll be okay. Every moment I was sure. I kind of love that I never known. You took over my heart and you made a home. Yeah, you made a home. And all the broken pieces within. You put them together.